today's session i'll come back to our discussion today's session we are going to talk about one of the applications which is very very handy especially when you are doing lightweight applications or pocs internally for your teams of course you can also go for a very large applications as well but there will be certain challenges with respect to the uh, right the tool itself but the benefit is minimal code again you don't have to really become a software development to write these applications so the pipeline right pipeline is nothing but the flow you can also say the data flow the data flow will always be in its raw format when it starts and it becomes insights insights or you can say information using which you will be able to make decisions this is what is the process and that's what we are going to do as part of our day to day activities as data scientists so these are data sources your data could basically come from any channel we always remember we are not sticking to one specific uh, flow we will always try to generalize these things because we don't have control over the business flow business can evolve right today they might not have iot devices set but because the industry is trending and there could be a scenarios where the organizations have uh, or or they kind of been enforced to utilize these iot devices for example before covid a lot of manual things were happening right manual transactions were happening but everything now is on digital platforms companies were enforced to do that so your pipeline should be flexible enough to accept the data that is coming from different different channels right so it has to be flexible enough to integrate into these different options now when you plan from that perspective you also need to understand that the format of all these data points that are getting collected or captured in these different sources will be different right the format would be completely different so in such cases we would ensure that the data is transformed right you do pre processing manipulation will happen while the data is getting moved into the database the database could be oltp that means you also have an application which is being used by the end users and when the transactions are happening when the communication happens with the client using that front end application or web form different web forms the data gets generated and that data goes and sits into your database so these could be various sources from where the data is getting generated and all the data can be tweaked transformed into appropriate form you can give schema you define a schema and then store all that data into your database now this is your raw data right you are taking your raw data that is captured now in this data you might have a lot of challenges there could be non numeric fields there could be missing data there could be very very exceptional cases there could be different different forms of data there could be some of the relevant features missing so a lot of manipulation of these fields are required so we do that as part of data pre processing that would be your second stage of crisp ml queue we call it as data pre processing and as part of the data pre processing stage we we also do a lot of descriptive analytics preliminary statistical analysis as part of eda this will reveal a lot of information then we also try and do cleaning we try and do transformations uh, we try and do encoding we try to do scaling right so so on so forth different different challenges could be there in the data and depending on what challenges your data have you're going to 
um, basically address those challenges. And ultimately, we are going to bring the data into a structured form, which contains all the required relevant fields, relevant data in structured form. In Python, I would like to add my personal uh, point here. At a very, very high level, friends, this is what we do. In Python, we load the data to Python. We do a lot of manipulation. We call it as data pre-processing. And ultimately, what we are achieving here is, using all the libraries we do that, Ultimately, we need to try and bring the data into data frame format. This is, this is the high level objective of your data pre-processing stage. Raw data, load, convert that into data frame. Okay. Now, once the data is available, then comes your model building and model evaluation, model tuning techniques. Here you can try and use a lot of uh, experiments, manual, or you can also use a lot of auto ML libraries that are now available, right? Here also we can do auto EDA. We can do auto reprocessing, right? A lot of these steps, you will have to generate all these steps into a pipeline, ML pipeline. Uh, because when your raw data comes in, raw data could also, right, uh, will be in this format only, your raw data, right? And that raw data has to be processed and made ready. So it, it has to go through sequence of steps. So we're going to define that in pipeline. And post that, we are going to train the model using that clean the data. Train your machine learning model on the clean data. And then we also try to tune it and evaluate. Finally, we will get the best model after hyperparameter optimization uh, techniques or those things that we use. Finally, we will get best model. Now, this best model will be stored in the code repository. It could be Git bucket, GitHub, Git, many other platforms of that. We, we basically store the best model here. A lot of contributors will be there while your model development uh, thing is happening. Different people can contribute to your code and ultimately you will get the single solution, the best solution. Now, this is your ML code. But if you want to deploy it, you need to give a UI, user interface for your end customers. Because the expectation is that end customers should actually use the functionality of the service that you're trying to give. That service is nothing but your ML service, ML model. If it is for prediction, for example, your UI that the end user is actually experiencing should ask for input and give the results as the the application works, right? It, it basically has to do the prediction and then give the results to the end user. The expectation is that, of course, the end user will not run the code, simple. Now for this UI, we were trying to create a lot of web application using HTML interfaces, HTML pages. And to do that, we started with Flask. Python Flask um, API. Then we talked about Fast API. Then we talked about Jan. These three are the three popular web frameworks, framework libraries, which are available in Python. Popular frameworks. These two, this, these and this are basically called as micro frameworks. This is specifically called as micro web framework library. This is considered to be super fast. And this is full stack web framework. It, it basically allows you to do a lot of things. Yeah. But it becomes heavier. The overall solution becomes very heavier. 
Now we are going to talk about Streamlit. And the Streamlit is another library which allows us to develop the web applications with minimum code. In these applications, you probably will be required to write some, some coding, right? HTML codes and all that, because whatever here you're doing, right? So there are two components that you will basically have to uh, develop. One is your, let's say Flask example, I take. One will be your Python library, Python code. It could be Flask code, Fast API code, or Django code. You're going to develop your Python code. And these Python codes will be referring to HTML pages. So you're going to also require this HTML page. This also has to be coded, right? Any of these, let's not talk about only Flask. Any of these three, these are the two components that we need to use. And these libraries are designed in such a way that this HTML code will be rendered, executed so that you get the UI. Ultimately, Though you are copy pasting the code, but at least you need to have that understanding where the right, HTML coding needs to be done. So you, you need. But thanks to this Streamlit application, it basically removes that HTML code part. I don't need to write even a single line of HTML code. All I do is I'll write my Streamlit Python code. That's all. The Streamlit is a application or you can say it's a, like a service a tool that you can use as a service which will have readily available widgets a lot of application components uh, which will allow us to develop the uh, right the ui automatically with basic standard streamlit codes okay so we will try and understand that also so this is about the application friends and as an end user, you will be able to uh, access your UI, right? It could be on a local machine or it could be a uh, URL which can be right, uh, used anywhere in the world as well. So this is the flow friends, uh, this is application. We are, we are basically trying to run a machine learning module after deploying it, okay? So all these codes that we are, I mean, all this while we were talking about uh, the, um, HTML rendering web framework libraries. Today also we are going to try and focus on that only uh, streamlet without any code. We've also talked about Docker. We will uh, right uh, discuss more about these um, usage. Uh, when we talk about deployment, there are two aspects, friends. One is your UI that you are going to focus. That is your HTML part. That is what we are focusing all this while. But you also need to have a server which hosts all this code to get the experience to the end user. So you will have software, you'll also have hardware that is required for end user experience. Right. And this is something that we have not focused much except for the Docker. And of course, we also talked about Heroku, which also right, automatically gives you something called as dynos, which are containerized concepts. And it hosts the services on your uh, Heroku cloud. But we will, as I said, we will more discuss more about that. 